May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cuke Audio Podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, preserving the legacy of Shinju Suzuki and those whose paths crossed his. And anything else that comes to mind, I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So today we have a guest, John Joseph Roshi, a teacher in the Pacific Zen Institute. And uh, uh, I did a a Zoom meeting with uh, his uh, group uh, recently in what they call the Zen Luminary Series. And uh, Peter Coyote is going to be on next week, and he talks about that, or I think on the 28th. Uh, and is that next week? Uh, it's, it's getting close. Now, we say this in the podcast, but to remind you here, to um, to attend the Zen Luminary Series with Peter Coyote on the 28th at 6 p.m. Pacific time, go to pacificzen.org, and um, it'll, be, it'll be clear on the homepage there what to do. Well, one thing I want to say about John Joseph is that when I did the Zoom meeting with them, uh, I talked to him a lot, several times, long phone calls beforehand. And, uh, he, he, you know, he really had all his uh, ducks in order, as they say. And uh, But he was uh, quite knowledgeable about... Uh, uh, the Suzuki Roshi, the Suzuki Roshi Archive, Cuke.com. Uh, he's he's um, it's definitely part of his practice. Um, I was impressed. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Well, anyway, you'll hear. You'll hear. Uh, he's um, he's had a very diverse life and study. Well, anyway, you're going to hear from John Joseph. After we've had our pause to meditate, we'll give them a call. So when uh, when you hear the bell, hit pause. If you're of such a mind and meditate or whatever for as long as you wish, and when you're ready to come back, uh, hit unpause, and we'll be here to hit the bell to end the meditation or whatever. And uh, we'll give John Joseph a call. Hello. Hello, John Joseph. How are you doing? Hi, David Chadwick. David. Hi. Chadwick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, here we are again. Indeed, indeed. But when did we talk? Uh, I did that podcast. No, I did that Zoom meeting with your group a week. Ten days ago or something. Well, it was ago. the 28th, so it was almost three weeks ago. Yeah, we're going to have Peter oh. Coyote in, in another uh, eight or ten days. Yeah. Oh, I want to I wanna join. Um, hey, well, tell us. Tell us what it is. And, uh, oh, or is it open to anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are, are you talking about the Zen Luminary Series? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's open to yeah, everyone. Well, tell them about Tell them about um, uh, uh, the Zen Luminary Series. Um, you're a teacher with uh, the Pacific Zen Institute, which was founded by uh, my dear friend and benefactor, <laughs> John Tarrant. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, you run the Zen Luminary Series. And 
uh, accidentally, uh, I was one of the guests. <laughs> that, that was great. I really had a good time. Oh, and, we had uh, a great time, and, and people people really loved it. And, and, you know, the words that came back time and time again were authenticity, and David is, you know, holy himself. And, and you know, when we can show that, you know, in our lives and in our practice, um, people feel that they can do that, right, that they can be authentic. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, tell us how we can uh, join, how we can hear about Peter Coyote, for instance. What's the date and what do you do? Right, right. So the date is uh, the 28th, uh, Monday, the 28th. It's uh, going to start at uh, 6 uh, Pacific Daylight Time, uh, 28th of March. And then we go for about an hour and a half. And what you do is you go to the PacificZen.org. Uh, website and you click on events or you click on calendar and you'll find that for that night. And then when you click through that, it'll have a sign up and <clears throat> we, we ask that non-members make a donation of, I think it's about $10 or so. Uh, and members, I think it's uh, free, but it's actually free for, for everybody if you can't afford it. And, uh, so it's a it's a great forum, and we started it uh, last October, September, October, with uh, Thomas Yuho Kirchner, who was a translator of Linji and <clears throat> the Book of Linji, uh, and he basically took over two three hundred um, pages of of notes and notebooks from Ruth Phyllis Sasaki that had been molding. Oh, is that in, right? Daitokuji mm. for years. And, and so he took that over and he finished up. He really, what he did is he really cleaned up Zen dust, right? And uh, it's just a oh. tremendous document, which I use every week. Uh, the oh. Linji, the book, uh, the record of Linji. And then he also did Entangling Vines. And then, uh, you know, Thomas Kirchner was a monk for about a decade at uh, Kenchoji and I don't know. He might have been at Du Takuji and elsewhere. And so he gave us some insight on uh, the life of a monk, particularly a foreigner monk, which he found to be as as long as you learned your Japanese and you did what they did, you know, they, you were treated uh, the same as anyone else. And and so huh. he really seemed uh -huh. to enjoy that that monk experience. Uh huh. Well, that's that's um, that depends on where you are being treated like everyone. Else. <laughs> right. Well, you've got a little experience there too. <laughs> he was with people who were really practicing and respected his practice, and and he's i you know I've met him. I visited him in the temple where he lives. Katrink and I did wonderful place. God, so cool. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, you know that guy is done his homework my god yeah so, he's done sure. some great scholarly work and he's turned out some books that are you know like like i said i i use them all the time i use lingy and entangling binds every week mm, mm, mm. wow that's that's great well um now that makes me want to go back and listen to it can we hear uh archived, <laughs> yeah he's, um, uh, he's in the uh we call Kalpa. It's Koans and uh, Liberation Project Archives, and it's uh, the largest, we believe, uh, largest uh, online library of koans in the world. Wow, that is cool. Um, uh, send me an email about that, and I'll. I'll uh, well, if you just go to PacificDen.org, okay. you should be able to find it just fine. All right, uh, give, give me those. Um, Give me the the, uh, the acronym. Are they letters? Again? Yeah, K A L P A. Oh, Kalpa, right? That's right. Huh? Cool. Uh, online uh, Cohen archives or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not so online. it's a Cohen and Liberation Project archives. Yeah. Yeah, that is great. I, I want to mention something you told me that Peter Coyote said <laughs> out of self-interest. 
Yeah. Uh, um, it- <laughs> so we will be having Peter next week, and uh, we usually try to give an honorarium. And um, Peter said that uh, we should uh, donate to you and your project, cuke.com and et cetera, uh, any thing that might have been going his way. So we're happy to do that. I'm very happy you're going to do that. And, uh, you, you, you know, uh, you told me that, you know, just a little bit ago when we were talking on WhatsApp, and I said, "Hey, bring that up in the podcast." So we've done yeah, that. Sure. Now let's. Uh, that's good. Um, I appreciate that. And um, uh, yeah, he's been. He uh, Peter has always been a good, loyal friend. Well, you know, for for for. Yeah, David, for, for, for our needs, you know, with regard to the Luminary series and stuff like that, um, he's not only a great guy, but he really gets it, you know. And yeah. uh, to me, I don't care if he's been an actor, a movie star, or, you know, anything, a poet. I, I want to talk to people who understand, you know, koans and understand Zen. And I think he does. And, uh, so he's very, very refresh, refreshing to talk to. And we, we were only going to talk for about 20 minutes. We ended up talking for about an hour and 15 minutes. We both had to run. And so I think uh, we're going to finish up the conversation at some time. But uh, we will happily have him uh, online uh, in about a week and a half or so on the 28th. Oh, that's great. Well, um, I, I, I made a note here. All right. Now. Uh, tell us about yourself. What, what's your um, uh, uh, way-seeking mind trip? What's your uh, where, where did it all start, and, and how did you end up where you are now? You know, yeah, whatever you uh, want to say. Well, uh, I, I first started sitting zazen when I was seventeen, and I was in high school, and there were about a, a group of about a half dozen of us, and we'd hop in the back of Dana Olvey's uh, International Harvester pickup truck and chug up the hill uh, in the pre-dawn on Wednesdays and Saturdays and sit at uh, our Spanish teacher's house. And his name was Robert A. King. And he had studied under um, uh, So Kyung Bo, a Korean master. Who's, uh-huh. who was Where was this? Pretty, um, he had studied in the United States uh, uh and uh, uh, Kyung, so Kyung Bo had come to the United States and had gotten a Ph.D. at Temple University. But he was very well known in Korea and he was very plugged in politically and the like. And he had a system of of temples and stuff like that. He never had a large following, as far as I know, in the United States. But so Bob King uh, studied with him and Bob is worth a a podcast in and of himself. He was, um, he was, um, crippled by, uh, polio when he was a child, uh, during the Japanese occupation of Manila, where he lived, his mother was half Spanish, half Filipino and his father American. And she had taken him back to the Philippines just before world war two. So he, she could be with her family. And then they were trapped in the Japanese occupation and had to suffer under that. Uh, and then he came back to the United States and uh, became a teacher of Spanish in our high school. And he was really well regarded. Where? Teacher. Where? In Walnut Creek, Walnut Creek, California, which is. Oh, really? The, yeah. To the east goodness. of Berkeley, Oakland. Right. And uh, in what year Mount was Dabo this? Area. This was 1972. And so we began uh-huh. studying and, and sitting. And this was uh, just uh really weeks after uh, Shunju Suzuki passed. And uh-huh. I started going down to Sashin, down to Zen Center of Los Angeles and uh, met uh, Maizumi Roshi and some of his head monks. And then um, started a period of uh, sort of Sashin practice down there, which lasted for, for several years. Um, but after high school, rather than going to college, um, we were really more interested in um, in adventuring in Alaska, and so we hitchhiked up to Southeast Alaska, or we we hitchhiked up to Washington. Who's we? Who's well? Who's us, we? Our, our Zen group, our Zen friends of five guys. And no kidding, 
fire. Yeah, and then wow. so we were not, you know, we were eating brown rice and sitting zazen and drinking green tea and, and hiking like, mm. you know, madmen. And so we went mm. up and, and uh, we went to the Yukon River and we built rafts and we floated down the Yukon River. And then that winter, I lived in a cabin by myself and, and uh, helped build that cabin and mush dogs. And then I went and worked as a logger and then as a commercial fisherman for a couple of seasons in Alaska. But anyway, mm. I went down to college in, um, in Arcata and moved into the internal school and became sort of the Zen guy of uh, a, uh, it was a spiritual uh, commune, essentially, is what it was. And there was a TM guy, and, you know, I was the Zen guy. There was Kung Fu classes. There were Aikido classes. And it was really great. And um, so I, school? I lived there. It was called, um, well, I went to Humboldt State University, which is now Polytech Humboldt uh, State or something. And um, so that was called the internal school. And Jim, uh, whose last name I forget right now, uh, was the founder of that. He was, he was a great guy. And mm. so I lived there for a couple of years and then moved out to a daffodil farm, finished up. But at any rate, all this time we were holding session, uh, at the internal school. Uh, one of, uh, so Kyungbo's successors, Donald Gilbert was coming up and giving retreats. And I was sort of the tanto, the head of practice for those. And I was also going down to Zen center in Los Angeles or retreats. And then after I graduated from college, I decided to go out to Japan to study uh, Japanese for a year. Cause I thought maybe I would want to, I, I would become an academic and, and I knew you needed some good language skills, but also while in Japan, I wanted to be able to sit Zen. And when I came down from Alaska, just by chance, I met one of Aiken Roshi's former students in Nevada city in a bar and that next Saturday, hmm. uh, went out to Gary Snyder's ranch, Kit Kizzy, uh, to finish up session with Bob Aiken, who hmm. uh, was in the middle of a five or seven day session at Gary Snyder's at the uh, on the ridge. And so Aiken introduced me to. I told him I was headed out to Japan, and he introduced me to Yamada Kohn, who he had studied with in Kamakura. And so I moved, uh, I moved to Kamakura the second day I was in Japan and I never left. Wonderful town. Mm, yeah. And so I was in Kamakura, I was in Kamakura for four years, uh, went back to graduate school at Berkeley for two years and sat with Mel Weitzman and Zen Center oh. Los Angeles for a couple of years oh. when I was in Berkeley. And then, then I went back for four years, uh, more, uh, at, uh, uh, in, in Japan and, and continued my, my koan studies with uh, Yamada Kone. And then I left uh, Japan, and the weekend that I left, he found that, fell down a stairway and, and was injured. And then he survived for about a year. Uh, but by that time, I was back in California. He was unconscious pretty much. And I was oh. in California, and I met up the, pretty much the second month I was in uh, California. I met up with John Terrence and and started studying with him. And that was 32 years ago. And that that started uh, the California Diamond Sangha. And then we changed the name to uh, Pacific Zen Institute in about year 2000. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Wow. That th 32 years ago. My goodness. yeah, yeah. It's hard to believe, right? So, um. Yeah, <laughs> I knew John in 2000. Uh, uh, you know, he's one of the people who read uh, Crooked Cucumber and made some suggestions. That was earlier. Mm -hmm. That was more like 98. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Well, um, you were in Japan how many years? Um, uh, two different times, but all together uh, because I came back for graduate school about eight years, seven and a half, eight years. And uh, you, you, your Japanese got quite good. You've done. Who was it? You, you were telling me you did um, translating for it. Was that? Well, oh, I uh, yeah, I went to Sophia University, Jochi Daigaku, the uh, no the kidding, Kokushibu, and uh, for 
for two years of intensive Japanese and then, um, and then, uh, yeah. Oh so, and then I spoke Japanese for, for that time. And, and when Yamada uh, came over to the United States, when I was going to graduate school, I served as his translator for, for some days, uh, while he was going uh-huh. around San Francisco, visiting Zen Center, uh, San, San Francisco Zen Center. And we had dinner with, uh, Dick Baker. So I got a chance to meet him. And at, was that at Green's? Yes. Mm-hmm. It was a beautiful uh-huh. sunset. It was just gorgeous evening. Yeah, yeah. And then he went up and he dedicated Ring of Bone Zendo uh, and uh, wrote a, uh, you know, wrote a really gorgeous scroll. And um, um, he wrote, it, it's, um, uh, you know, I guess Ring of Bone Zendo is based on a poem that... Um, who wrote the poem Ring of Bone? Um, I, um, was it, um, uh, oh God, that poet, Lou Welsh? Lou Welsh, yeah. He he was lost uh, in the woods and, and assumed uh, dead. But um, yeah, yeah, right. So, so it's the sound that um, um, Bone makes, right? So that that was Lou Welsh's Ring of Bone. It's a beautiful poem. I've used it lots of times. And Yamada had thought that Ring of Bone was actually like a bone sliced, you know, thin uh, in crosswise, you know, to make a ring like you might put uh-huh. on your finger or something. Oh, so, oh, right. Yeah. So it's different Chinese characters and stuff, but just a little color there for you. Oh, you mean he, <laughs> he, he, he wrote there, the kanji he wrote for ring was like ring you put on your finger. Right. Yeah. Not the sound, <laughs> of, not the sound of bone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is great. That's great. <laughs> so, well, um, my, that's uh, quite some, uh, uh, since 72, uh, that, that's quite a trajectory of your practice. So what, what, are you, what are you doing these days? I mean, I know you're doing the Zen Luminary series, but that's just like one little thing you're doing. Yeah, so the um, last 10 or 15 years, I've been largely retired from business. What happened is in Japan, I became a journalist uh, and uh, went back to Japan the second time as a foreign correspondent for McGraw-Hill Publications, which, uh, you know, Business Week. But I, I worked for trade mags like uh, Electronics Week and uh International Plastics, which actually was pretty fun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, huh. Oil Graham News and all that stuff. And they didn't have a lot of uh, uh, Japanese speakers. So I could go out in the field and, and get some pretty good, you know, insight into what's going on in Japanese industry and stuff. And I really enjoyed it a lot. But uh, I was getting paid almost nothing, like $27,000 a year, you know, and and the Japanese stock market was going up, and these these stock market analysts who were doing pretty much the same thing I was doing was getting paid four times what I got paid. So I thought I can do that, and I quit my journalism job and I became a financial analyst. And then I remained a financial analyst for about twenty years, and I eventually went back to the United States, worked for Montgomery Securities, worked for Kidder Peabody, moved back to New York for about six years, a couple different times. Um, and uh, finished my career as uh, a director of research for Solomon Smith Barney Citigroup in New York, uh, down wow. on Wall Street. Wow. Wow. I didn't know anything. And of that. that all ended about 10 or 15 years ago. So after that, after I left business, you know, I had continued my practice, and, and John Taron and I had continued to work on cons and go through the Blue Cliff record. And in fact, I went through all the cons twice. <laughs> was helpful. And, uh, uh, but so, uh, I, I began to dedicate myself more full time to, uh, my practice, my Zen practice and, uh, yeah. and, uh, and became, <clears throat> you know, had gotten into administration at Pacific Zen, you know, which, uh, all, most of us senior people have done, you know, we've rotated through as president, vice president, CFO and all that stuff. And, uh, I still remain um, in management a little bit, but but I also teach a lot. And so about, uh, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, 
I was made a sensei. And then uh, a few years after that, I was made a Roshi. And, uh, you know, so I teach most of the retreats, you know, I'll give a talk and then I'll see people in Doksan. And I've got uh, a, a couple of days a week, I, I largely dedicate to Doksan by a telephone or Zoom with students. So I've got uh, about uh, 15 or 20 people I talk to on a regular basis. We go through, you know, the koan curriculum and stuff. Ah, uh, uh, you know, my, my beloved wife, Katrinka, does uh, that with <laughs> um, with uh, David uh, Weinstein. Yeah, in, uh, yeah. Oakland, yeah. your, your uh, Dharma brother. Yeah, absolutely. When uh, we were drinking buddies in, in Kamakura, in fact, when I was first in Kamakura, it was just me and the Jesuits. And even though they liked to drink, I can't say that they were, they were all that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, David, David came and then we became drinking buddies and then other people from Hawaii came and stuff. So it was fun. It, it became a lot funner after a couple of years. Uh, but yeah. Dave, David yeah. Sarasa, his wife Sarasa, who you know well, um, moved into my house uh, in Oakland when he came back from Japan, which was soon after I returned from Japan. And then we were roommates for a couple of years, the three yeah. of us. And we started, we would have Zenkai. So John Tarrant would come down on weekends and do Zazenkai, you know, the Zen meetings down in our house uh, right. in Oakland. And then, and then uh, David and Sarasa moved out and, uh, I got married and, and, uh, you know, had a family, but we all stayed very close. And David was the best man at my wedding oh. and John, uh, read at my wedding. And, um, so yeah, we've known oh. each other for a long, long time. Wow. Wow. That's really interesting. Now, um, the, the way you and I re reconnected, uh, was, uh, you invited to me, me to be a, a guest on the Zen luminaries. And, uh, you know, I've done, I don't do lots and lots of, uh, I'm not invited to be a guest on lots and lots of stuff, just every now and then. But uh, one thing that was distinctly different about doing it with you is how well you planned it and how thoroughly, uh, um, uh, what do you say, conversant you were with uh uh, Shunyu Suzuki material. I mean, you, you, uh, it was very impressive. Uh, tell, tell me, how did that all come about? Uh, well, uh, you know, a couple of things, I think. One, when I got into this business, the Zen business, 1972, there <clears throat> were really two books, right? There was Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, and there was Three Pillars of Zen. And I read the three pillars of Zen and I wanted to work with Koans. I wanted that enlightenment that was promised, you know, in the three pillars of Zen. And uh, that section of my book got pretty dog-eared, as you might guess, you know, for many of us. And uh -huh. so I pursued that. And, and many of the people, I, I didn't go study with Caplo, though I told you about the people that would go chugging up the hill in the truck. Uh, they did, some of them did study with Capolo in uh -huh. back in Rochester. Uh, but instead I went to uh, Maizumi, who was part of that lineage, and then out to Yamada, who was, you know, figured pretty prominently and is, you know, by the people at the Stano and Zendo considered uh, pretty much the author of Three Pillars of Zen. I don't know about oh, who? all that, but... Who? Uh, Yamada Kohn, <laughs> but um, oh, oh yeah, he worked yeah, uh, very closely with Kaplo, and then Kaplo left Yasutani. So, uh, you know, I've heard that Yamada was doing Doksan with uh, Kaplo, uh, you know, before the split. But, <clears throat> but anyway, um, the point is, is that I didn't pay a lot of attention to Shinu Suzuki, and then about three years, decades. And then about 10 or 15 years ago, I think it was through cube.com that I listened hmm. to one of his lectures. And I remember it very distinctly. He was, must've been down at Tassajara because there was the sound of, uh, camp jays of, of, you know, blue jays and in the background. Stellar's and, jays. Stellar's jays. And he was, he was giving a talk 
and I was listening. And, <laughs> you know, if you've been around for a while, you get pretty quickly whether somebody has something to say or not. Uh-huh. And I'm not very patient if I, I don't think somebody has something to say. I don't care if they've been sitting done for 50 years or one year, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I thought he really had something that I hadn't appreciated before. And mm. so I began to investigate more. I reread uh, the Zen Mind Beginner's Mind. And, and then I started listening to Cute.com and all your just incredible, incredible uh, recordings and materials and stuff. So what happened with the Zen Luminary series is, you know, I've had a, during the pandemic, I've had a Monday night sitting with, you know, we get about 20 people plus minus um, for a couple of years. But I just kind of get tired of going blah, 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 you know, on Monday nights. And they're probably get tired <laughs> of listening to me go blah, blah, blah on Monday nights. So I decided to have some people who might be interesting that once a month, you know, we break it up a little bit. We have a a speaker. And I started with a, with a friend of mine who is a, um, uh, he's a uh, um, Jodo Shinshu. He's a priest in San Mateo. And, um, and then, uh, and then Thomas Hugo Kirchner. And then I started writing people like, I sent uh, Peter Hershock an email and boom, he comes back. Yes. And I send Red Pine an email, Red Pine Porter an email. He comes back. Yes. And so I was surprised at how easy and how willing people were to come onto the call. And so we started to build some momentum and your name came up very early, not only as a possible source, but also in terms of being connected to many, many people, you know, Michael Cassie, you basically know everybody, David, right? So, um, I've, I've heard you know. people tell me that through the years, yes. Um, I, <laughs> so I, I was told by Cass <laughs> and I was told by Tarrant that, you know, you got to get a hold of Chadwick. And, and I've known your work for a long time, and I love the Cricket Cucumber and Thank You and OK. Uh, or um, uh, is it Thank You and OK? Um, yes, and, yes, you yeah. got it right. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, um, and so you were natural for us. And so this gave me an opportunity to really go more deeply into Shinju Suzuki. And as I did so, I just became more and more appreciative <laughs> and, and really, really impressed. Uh, much mm. more so even in the last couple of months than, than a couple of years ago when I got reintroduced to him by chance. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. That, yeah, you, you were, you knew more about his teaching, what he had to say, the extent of the lectures and the material than almost anybody I've talked to, uh, who's not working with it, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Uh, Well, all I had to do was read your book, David which was, you know, excellent <laughs> and listen to a bunch of his lectures and go into the Suzuki, uh, the Suzuki recording at San Francisco Zen center, which, um, really, as you well know, and you and I talk, they really have to be improved because the quality sound quality is not good. But I, I was interested enough where I called them up and I said, look, um, you know, I would really love to play people, these recordings, and they were very amenable and they were very kind to let me do that. But, you know, when I clicked on Zen Mind Beginner's Mind and I heard him, you know, an expert has, you know, very few possibilities or, you know, a beginner has many possibilities and an expert has few. It just sort of the hair stood on the back of my head because here was the voice of the man who, you know, was one of the iconic founders of Zen in America. And, uh, it was great. Uh, I loved it. I knew people would respond well if we were able to get solid, solid, uh, and high quality audio, which you were able to provide for us. And I appreciate that. Yeah. And so it was fun um, to play some yeah. of his stuff and have you talk about it. Cause you were there, you were the, you were the, the monk in the room. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, um, mm. and uh, that was very helpful to me. Uh, there, there were two things I had done. Uh, one was last year um, when I uh, got the the book. Sean Bala published it, the audio book for Crooked Cucumber. I put a lecture uh, excerpt, a brief one at the end of each chapter. So that was a little mm -hmm. bonus, right, right? Right. Well, I had to work. I had to find audio that that was clear and good. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I, I work with audio. I work, you know, I do music and stuff, and I, I work with audio. So I, I uh, improved it as well as I could. It's pretty low quality to begin with, and um, so that was one thing. And then with you. Uh, we took these, um, you used some of those excerpts, but I uh, used some from the Beginner's Mind Lecture. So I just took the whole Beginner's Mind Lecture audio, which actually, well, the, the the volume level was way too low, the way that Zen Center uh, yeah, had it. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I ran it through a program, or through a, through a, a, a batch, I don't know what you call it, uh, that I, I used for uh, it, it makes it audiobook ready right uh -huh. uh, yeah and uh so it brought the volume up but it, it does things like bringing the mid-level up and stuff like that and uh so um i got some clips ready for you but then well i thought this is a good thing to do and we have all these light edits um, you know on shunyusuzuki.com is where we've moved all the the uh uh, the audio and the transcripts. And we have, you know, verbatim transcripts, uh, many lectures we don't mm -hmm. have uh, audio for to know if it's verbatim. We have every version we can, right? And, uh, uh, and we have light edits. We have, I don't know, we've, 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 of all the verbatim transcripts, we've done light edits of almost everything. And uh -huh. I thought, you know, there's no light edits of the audio. Uh, uh, yeah. And so because of doing that with you, I did Beginner's Mind, and then I did podcasts with it. I did seven podcasts, just taking the little clips, playing it, uh, oh, wow. playing it the way it was originally, and then playing mm -hmm. the the, uh, the edited version I did, and I'd read it and do that. And that stuff you got me to do. You got me to read it and play it. Um, and uh, then I did the calmness uh, lecture. Unfortunately, almost all of the Los Altos tapes were lost. We've only got like three of them or something. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I'm going to start, I'm going to start doing that. I've got other projects I'm working on. So uh, mm -hmm. little by little, I'm going to start going through the audio and uh, editing it. I love doing it. My Lord, I get to listen oh, yeah, to it, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I love any time I click on your website, David, and eq.com, like Joanna Kiger, I, you know, I knew of her a little bit, but I, you know, I, I read your transcript of your interview with her in 1995 or something. And, you know, right. how she, she was uh, engaged or involved with uh, Gary Snyder. And they're both, I don't know how, how old they were, early 60s, you know? And, uh, uh, he had to, they had to get married because it was looked, uh, you know, it was a real no, no for uh, oh, absolutely. living together. So they were married for four years together and living in Japan. And that's just tremendous cultural history that is so valuable in the work that you're doing with Suzuki Roshi in terms of cleaning up and editing his, you know, his material is just so valuable. And it, you don't, I know you have, 450 pieces or something like that. But what do they say that, that Jesus Christ, you know, if you read his stuff in the Bible, doesn't even add up to two hours of, of material. So it's not that you need hours and hours and hours. No, the last no hour, you know, um, and a few hours of really great Suzuki Roshi stuff that can live forever is, really really valuable and so yeah. my hat's off to you you know and what you're doing yeah. just that's why every chance we get uh you know we love to support you and we have john tarrant was one of your earliest 
Yeah, Tarrant was one of your um, earliest uh, supporters, right? And oh, um, definitely. Uh, he took money um, out of his pocket, and and Pacific Zen, what what money we had, we donated some to you, and we, you know, we gave you a five hundred one c three platform, and oh all that yeah, stuff. so yeah, yeah, we're happy to do that. PZI is the fiscal sponsor of Q Archives. Great. I really appreciate it. You're the best <laughs> fiscal spot. And PZI doesn't take anything. Now, that, uh, that, that, I shouldn't even tell you that because that is, that, that's not done. I mean, fiscal sponsors, they take, I looked into it when I first wanted one. And, and the Institute of Historical Studies right. uh, was my first uh, fiscal sponsor. And they still are one that I only use if somebody needs a non religious. Uh, non-profit right, right. to get no, to. No, no, it's right? all on the up and up tax-wise and right. everything. So I looked so, at it too. So uh, when I so when I was looking for one, I knew people who ran, uh, uh, you know, uh, foundations that could be. They wanted twenty percent and stuff like that. And the <laughs> Institute for Historical Studies took five percent, and I'm a member. That's the only group I'm a member of. Anyway, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, PCI, well, John has done more than that. I lived with John for eight know, or nine I years know. in his barn. Until, it, until the building inspector <laughs> discovered you. <laughs> well, it, it um, yeah, it was really time to go, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, for various reasons, it was time <laughs> for Katrinka and me to leave. Uh, and that, that was good. That was all good. Uh, yeah, it was a little yeah. traumatic. It was traumatic for Katrina, but I felt it was time to leave. And yeah. uh, but he's continued being um, just really good. Brandon, I'll say one thing about living with John. You know, living with him that long, I never saw him be anything but gracious and kind and understanding. Yeah. Uh, uh, that really shows. I mean, if you're living with somebody, I mean, we were living in different buildings. Um, but he was very understanding because, you know, various things happened that, uh, uh, would, uh, that were, mm, you know, uh, he could have gotten very angry or kicked me out or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and I had, you know, I had a, a teenage son staying there mm -hmm. a great deal, uh, who had, uh, you know, John was wonderful with him, but, uh, he was, my son oh, that was, was uh, challenging. Clay or Clay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Clay, that, yeah, that was that challenging. Clay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, John, um, gosh, uh, you know, what can you say? I mean, he's just been tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Um, he's a cultural icon in my mind, you know. Yeah. He's created, he's created a kind of a Zen that is um, rich, you know, yeah. deeply deeply rich and uh uh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean i i can't i can't say enough about deepest appreciation you know nine yeah. deep hours you know and i i like to going over and sitting uh, on a monday nights i like when they had that place in uh, mm -hmm. santa rosa and you know right. katrinka who's a manager you know she was Managed the Pelican Inn in, in Muir Beach for ten years, mm -hmm. and when she moved with in with me, uh, she became a manager for PCI. She was setting up the sessions. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, I know. That's how I got to know her. She was, she she did a lot of the shopping. She was kind of a COO for our retreats. Yeah, and 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 then she she kept me to drive a truck and unload things, and I'd end up cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of them, which I love doing, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I love, you know, loading and unloading trucks mm -hmm. and okay. sweeping <laughs> and stuff like that. You also yeah. seem to really love um, fixing up old barns and dilapidated <sighs> houses and that sort of thing because you've done it time yeah. and time again. You, you did Mayumi's old house and oh. uh, you fixed up John's barn and you did some other stuff. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, 
All right, back to the essential subject uh, at hand. So that's, uh, um, that's anyway, I've been very impressed with uh, your knowledge of Shinya Suzuki and that, all that, and, and the teaching. And that's not even your lineage. Uh, so, uh, hey, tell us a little bit about uh, your lineage up there about PZI, the Pacific Zen Institute. We had an interview with uh, John Tarrant uh, maybe yeah. a month or two ago, but uh, and I would recommend anybody listen to that. That was really yeah. a great, great interview. But you know what we're doing at Pacific Zen is just so unique, and and we have changed so much in the last thirty-two years, and it's been a hell of a ride because we started wearing robes and chanting all in Japanese, and and. Uh, you know, Keisaku, Kyosaku, you know, the stick and, and running the Doksan and, you know, it was very traditional. And John had a reputation when he was in Hawaii with Aitken for being very traditional, evidently. But, hmm. but we transformed and we evolved and we, uh, and I, I give John all the credit here. We embraced the art. And we embraced uh, just the uh, poetry and writing and and dance and music and music and we've integrated all of these into our practice and it's developed such a rich and satisfying culture and yeah. I think the 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 reason we can do that is the confidence that we have in our practice. And, and again, you know, I think this part uh, largely comes from John, but you know, something he was, he's been able to spread around uh, with in his own own group is just um, the confidence in awakening and in transformation. And uh, you know, particularly with regard to the koan work and using koans in, as as kind of instruments, but um, uh, just companions to awakening, mm -hmm. uh, gates to awakening, and um, so it's been that deep confidence that that has allowed us to experiment, and I think not only stay on the money, but stay right on top of the money. You know, the the light that shines, you know, in all things. So. Yeah, I just uh, I've just been so happy to be, you know, part of this organization for a long time in in different iterations. You know, as a business person, as a you know, as the president of the organization, as a teacher, as as the everything. You know, um, mm. uh, as a student, so fabulous. You, as a student, long yeah. as a student. You know, still a student. You know, beginner's wow. mind. <laughs> I'm getting that tattooed on the back of my arm, so on my arm, so yeah. I can look at that every every day, maybe every moment of every day. <laughs> mm. 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 Yeah, I'm 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 grateful. Uh, you know, I'm grateful for a lot of things constantly, and one of them is my relationship with uh, BZI and John mm. and you and David Weinstein and um, oh yeah, so many. So many neat people I've known. Mm. Uh, who you know, been with I uh, had a conversation with Peter um, Peter Coyote, and I had met Peter back in 1982. Uh, he had just got into maybe he had just shot ET, or maybe he was going to shoot ET. I don't know. It was about that time, you know, uh, when he was starting to get into the movies uh, big time, and he picked me up in Marin and we drove up to ring a bones endo together and did a session with Aitken up there. He had studied oh. with Aitken for a little while. So of course he didn't remember me because he's had 10,000 people stream through his life. But, uh, what <laughs> really impressed me recently in doing my homework in preparation for his coming and join us in the luminary series was <laughs> how deep he is, you know, I mean, he is really great, and he's fun, and uh, he's educated, and he's disciplined, and 
you know, he's just got all these wonderful, wonderful qualities that had I not been preparing to interview him, I, I wouldn't know. It'd just be, oh, Peter Coyote. Yeah, he's the Zen guy, our, you know, actor guy. And yeah, he did, he did turn out a couple books and, you know, that sort of thing. But so I'm really yeah. looking forward to our, our meeting. Uh, like I said, we, uh, we were supposed to talk for about 20 minutes uh, yesterday and we ended up talking an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes and, and just going on and on and deciding that we're only partially done with our conversation. So, mm. uh, yeah, mm. He's, it'll be a pleasure to have on. Yeah, yeah. And it's a great opportunity for me and you probably realize this a bit is um, when you get to know other people's lives and other people's, bodhicitta you know their way seeking mind and what brought them from here there to here you know to this yeah. moment in this place um, it's often very moving and yeah to, yes. to see uh, you know a peter hershock peter hershock is a wonderful guy you should talk to him um you know uh red pine like i said red pine and and uh, peter hinton is a wonderful guy He's, um, you know, tremendous translator poetry. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, so there are a yeah. lot of talented people out there, and I just love getting to know them a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think my podcast with uh, Bill Porter, Red Pine, went on two hours or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should listen to it, yeah. We're going to have him back. Uh, and we're going to have a number of people back if we can. And then we have um, we have Na- Naomi Shihab Nye coming, uh, the poet, and uh, we have Jane Hirschfield coming, who is a good friend of yours, a poet also. Oh, yeah, and, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, and we have Joan Sutherland who's coming. She's going to be publishing a new book, and she's got a really unique and interesting view on oh, environmental, you know, Zen, politics, you know, the, the screwed up world we're currently in and how to yeah. practice in the midst of that. So she's yeah. got a great, unique voice in that regard. And I'm looking forward to having her and understanding oh, yeah. um, her new book. She's very sharp. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, hey, I'll tell you somebody you should have is uh, who I had last Saturday. The, 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 uh, we, one week ago, Andy Ferguson. Uh, I think oh, you he'd... mentioned him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that and listen to that. Listen to that. Uh, uh, that's really interesting stuff. Uh, and uh, Andy knows his Chinese, his Zen, his, I mean, good Lord. That guy's got a brain, I'll tell you. And, uh, uh-huh. Well, I love his his Zen ancestors book. I you know I source it all the time, and the, the, some of the stories that he has in there have never been published elsewhere. You know, um, Zen's Chinese heritage. It's right here. I have it in my left hand. So, mm-hmm. uh huh. Um, could you send me his uh, email if if you remember? Could you send? Could you send me his contact information? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I don't <laughs> ask me, remind me. Uh, I, I will. I'll my, send you an email. My, <laughs> my poor feeble uh, senior citizen mind is is um, it, it's very pleasantly that, emptying out. What did Suzuki uh, say about senior citizens' mind? Is that is that your next uh, book of transcripts? <laughs> well, he thought he thought being sixty was old, and that's you know for those <laughs> older Japanese it was. I mean, retirement uh, was set in Japan at fifty-five. You know, mm, and yeah. they sort of thought you know over fifty-five, that's it. You know, you're just uh, you know you know the term. Uh, I think it's nuruba, uh wet leaves. Nuruba. Yeah, uh, uh, uh-huh. that's a retired N- N- husband. Yeah, nudie, that makes sense, the wet leaves, sure. Uh-huh. And that's a husband who's retired. It's just like wet leaves, you know, you can't rake them, you know. They're, uh, and uh, I'll tell you one thing uh, Suzuki said about, and he says he feels like he's very young, uh, you know, until he looks in the mirror. 
<laughs> and and he goes, oh, I guess I'm not that young. <laughs> All right. Well, look. Um, is there anything else you'd you'd like to say before we go our separate ways? Um. Yeah. When are you coming back to the states next? And be fun to get together. I have together. no plans to go to the states, but I probably <laughs> will. Uh, it's, I I don't want to drive. It's very big. Everybody's got guns and are shooting each other. And uh, <laughs> and things here are so much more stable, you know, in a way. I mean, people here are, America's like a zoo. You know, people here, the Muslims, the Christians, the Hindus, they're all, you know, pretty copacetic with each other and everything goes pretty smooth. And people are polite and uh, there's problems and there's a lot of stuff beneath the surface but it's mm -hmm. very pleasant being here and, and people treat each other well I mean uh, it's just a it's just very nice being here. yeah yeah uh, <laughs> um, I love relating to people here I don't know about going to America I I want them to come here my my son, Clay, I mean, we're communicating all the time with both my sons, but I haven't seen Clay now in um, eight and a half years. Oh, my. Kelly's been here a couple of times. And, uh, you know. Uh, have you have you not been back since you? Since no. You, uh, no, no. Oh, I see. Oh. I've not been back. Because I know Katrinka's come through once in a while. She goes back every year. That's our main expense. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's another reason it's expensive to go there, and America is expensive. Well, the main thing I think of is is uh, the expense, and then having to travel. I don't like to get in cars and go places anymore. We mainly walk mm -hmm. places or go short distances. We're gonna mm -hmm. go. We're gonna take a few days off. Uh, tomorrow we're leaving, and it's thirty minutes away. <laughs> 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 so, I read Eat, Pray, Love, and I love, and, and that was a pretty fun book. Uh, Eat, Pray, mm. Love. Oh yeah, that 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 uh, filled Bali with women seeking uh, yeah. mates. Really, I'm not kidding. You know, I mean, there was this enormous number, and and that was still happening when when we were and they go to Ubud, and you know, I gave this idealistic picture uh, of, uh, yeah. of Bali that was just, you know, I mean, there's plenty of downside, plenty of downside, you know. Uh, you know uh, well, David, um, yeah, um, the my printer, I'm getting knocks on my on my office door here, and my printer is activated. Somebody's printing stuff, so... Um, I think we've got some business to take care of here, but yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I want to thank you so much. I mean, you're just your, your lovely spirit, your hard work, the treasures that you are maintaining and creating and just, it's just tremendous. It's uh, I, I'm so deeply thankful for what you're doing. Well, thanks for reminding me. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I never, th I just think of it, you know, it's like a job. I got all this stuff to do and it's, I'm compulsive. Uh, and I, I forget it has any value or anything. Oh, it but, does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. Well, what you're doing has value too. And I, re I really enjoyed communicating with you and uh, let's, let's keep it up and. Let's stay and, in touch. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Good. Let's stay in touch. Maybe I'll get over there. Uh, or maybe you'll get over here. That's more likely. Maybe. I'd say. I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, thanks a lot, John. All right, Joseph. My friend. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, take care and say hi to John. Oh, okay. We'll do. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. So thanks a lot, John Joseph. That was great. That was great. Wow. An interesting path you've been on and continue on. This has been a Cuke Audio 
podcast. I'm DC Poop uh, of Cuc Audio and Cuc Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sonor with Dog at Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and Dear Lovely Kudrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening. <laughs> 